Welcome to another edition of the Community Spotlight. Hey, we got a good, nice, special guest for you here today, Mr. Don Bailey. He had a lifetime of interest in the carnival and done many other things, and uh, we're here to interview him today and see a little bit about his unique and refreshing life that you don't get to hear much about. Because, hey, you know, how many people get to meet some individual just on their daily with the uh, this kind of background. Anyway, Don Bailey. Hi, how are you, Tom? How are you? Good to be here. Now, um, I always like starting out from the beginning, and I'm sure you were born at a very early age. <laughs> uh, where were you born? I was born originally in uh, Marietta, Ohio. And my kin folks are all from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, I was, I, I'm, I'm a hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of um, childhood do you have? What kind of activities, what kind of things do you enjoy growing up? Uh, when my first experience with the carnival was, uh, I was eight years old. Wow, and that's I, young. I, uh, I went to the fair at the local fair in my town. And, uh, there was, um, you know, all the games and, the, and all that stuff, and I was starting to starting to realize the world, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I just was fascinated by it all, you know, and uh, I didn't realize though that uh, a few short years from there I would be on a midway, working. And so, I mean, you you didn't have the typical type childhood to where you. You, you got a job delivering papers, you got a job bagging groceries, you just went straight into... I went into the, the industry in 1979. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, just turning 15 years old. And um, I was taken in by a gypsy family and they, they were, they had knowledge of the fact I was a runaway, <laughs> but they, you know, they. So you were a runaway. You ran away from. I, I ran away. Okay. And uh, it was due to really bad situation, and it, you know, I, I went through, I went through a lot. It was an adopted situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it was crazy. So I made the decision to leave. I eliminated myself from the situation. Um. And the gypsy family took me in. Uh, they were very predominant at the time. They had a lot of games. Mm -hmm. uh, my very first job on the Midway, I sat behind three spinning boards, balloon boards. Um, and when they spun around, they were empty. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no balloons on them because they done popped them. Right. <laughs> now, for so, people who might not know what the Midway is, explain what that. Uh, is. The Midway is what we call in the business anywhere that we we have established rides and games, okay. and and made walkways through. Mm -hmm. So that and that creates a midway. I got you. So uh, the um, the uh, point being is uh, we. We were behind, I was sitting behind the boards, and they told me, Johnny told me, he said, I want you to sit behind these boards, blow them, keep them balloons blowed up, and keep them boards full, and listen. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, listen. What was I listening to? I was listening to three of the strongest collection agents working a balloon store up front mm -hmm. in the country at the time. Hmm. Interesting. The best. And so I 
that's what I did. I had a little air compressor. And you held the balloon up to it and it would blow it up and then you tied it real quick, poop, boom, bang, and throw it in the bag. Mm -hmm. And I would fill those bags up and I would fill the boards up. Once the bags and the boards are full, then I could take a break. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I got uh, a whopping $10 a day for that. <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. yeah, times have changed. But uh, you were 15 years old. Yeah, and you started. And was that in the the area in which you grew up? Oh no, uh, no. I uh, I left Marriott, Ohio, on uh, I 77 uh, on the ramp and hitchhiked all the way to Georgia. Wow. Yeah, of course there wasn't no Amber Alerts back then. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and and you just got to Georgia and just I got to Georgia. I had had I had communication with a friend of mine. Uh, he was much older. Uh, he worked for the fair that was in my town, mm -hmm. uh, and was traveling with them. But he was from my town, mm -hmm. and he had given me tips on who to talk to and where to go, and that's how I knew to go to Thomasville, Georgia. Ah, so once you, once you got to Georgia in Thomasville, mm -hmm. you looked these people up and mm -hmm. and they took you on board with them. Yes. Now, how he had, and he had contacted them. They knew I was coming. And w once you got on board with an established company, um, how much travel was involved in this? Was it just regional, or was it throughout um, the the the, 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 the show the show that I started on was called Johnny's United Shows, uh, and they're no longer in business. They've been gone for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, more than 20 years. Uh, but they were uh, regional to Georgia area and Alabama, tri-state kind of, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a tri-state thing. Because I know they did some, they did some spots in Mississippi too. So, they but they weren't, they didn't spread out real far. Mm -hmm. But they were based. The people that I worked for were based out of New Jersey. Right. That was like the corporate headquarters, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The home of the family. Yeah. So that uh, might bring light to something I mentioned to you off camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> the home of the family. Yeah. Um, so how long did you stay with this particular company? Uh, I was with them uh, about one full season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, between, uh, between 1980 and uh, 1981, I had returned back because the season was over and I had returned back to my hometown. And of course I got snatched up real quick and tossed back in the open door home. And, <laughs> right. and uh, then, but now I'm 17 or 16 going on 17. And so I blew again and this time I didn't come back. Ah. I where did come, you? I where did the wind blow you to that time? <laughs> where did the wind blow you to that time? I went back to the show. Mm -hmm. um, the family that I was working with uh, had got in um, a sticky situation, and uh, it was um, it was pretty serious. So they they didn't need any loose ends. Uh, and I was a loose end based on the fact that I was a runaway, so they didn't need that around right. at the time. So they they had pawned me off, mm -hmm. so to speak. And it was the very first time I'd ever been pawned off. Now, when you get pawned off in the business, usually there's money exchanged. <laughs> right, right. So, like... Uh, interesting ad note, uh, when I first got there, the family wasn't there and this other guy picked me up on the midway and put me to working on a kitty ride mm -hmm. and when johnny showed up he said oh no 
He said, well, I've already, I've already got his shirt. I already did this. I did that. I gave him money. He says, okay, here, I'll give you $50 for him. That's like the old, old, <laughs> old fashioned type, uh, type of uh, human trafficking. Yeah, you know, you the, know? the innocent type yeah, human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but yeah, and I've had uh, it, later in my career, I've had I've had people walk on the midway and walk around, and they would say, "I'll give you a thousand dollars for that ID. I'll give you a thousand dollars for that ID." Yeah, and they would pick us up and take us to their show. <laughs> so I, I mean, so you literally spent years getting picked up and going to different companies. Sure, uh, sure. I worked with uh, many <coughs> major, major carnivals uh, that worked uh, both rodeos, state fairs, county fairs, uh, and everything in between. I mean, so how much travel did you end up doing in your career? Uh, it would span... Um, it would span from... As far west as Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, I never played California. Mm -hmm. Never played it. Um, never went more west than Vegas. Uh, but then everything back east, mm -hmm. you name it, I've been there. And I'm sure the Midwest is always real popular. Oh uh, yeah, we did a lot of that. Yeah, the the big state fairs in mm -hmm. Iowa, and all the big like state fairs, all the big rodeos. I I played Cheyenne, Wyoming, probably eight times in my career. Yeah, that's the granddaddy of them all. Is it? Yeah, Garth Brooks showed up there, and I met him backstage. Yeah, I always like Wyoming and the vibe you get there myself. Yeah, it's a good good state. It's really cool. Yeah. Beaches of Cheyenne was actually written about a um, pond that mm -hmm. exists on the fair or on the grounds there, and those are the beaches of Cheyenne. There's sand around it, and that's what that song. That's where that originates from. Is from the Cheyenne frontier days. He, uh, the the boy, rode a bull and got killed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure. Cause you 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 did this from the time you were fifteen up until what age? <clears throat> My official leave from the business was twenty ten. Okay, so that was a few decades, and uh, I'm sure that you're full of tons and tons of of different uh, unique and quite interesting stories that you probably can't tell most of, but, um, the ones that you can tell, I mean, what, what, what was it like to you? Because people are different, even though we're all the same, yeah. depending on what part of the country you're at, people have different aspects to them regionally. Absolutely. And, and so what, what was it like? What did you think about dealing with, with, Midwesterners now and Southerners and Yankees from down east and 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 just having that array of of, of audience uh, consistently, I'm sure that had to <laughs> excuse me that had to augment your uh, your approach somewhat, didn't it? Sure. Yeah. When I first broke in the business, I, I mentioned earlier I come from West Virginia, but you can't mm -hmm. tell. Um, I would have never that, guessed that. And the no, reason, yeah. the reason being, is I had to learn to speak plain, mm -hmm. uh, to because of what I was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, a lot of times, what we would do is Camille, uh, when we would play Louisiana, uh, you know, I might, I might talk a little different. Yeah, you're you know, chameleon might, yourself. Yeah. yeah, you know that way they don't feel so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah showmanship. That's Absolutely. what it is. And, I, and that's what a lot of people don't uh, really understand about the carnival. They'll go to them. They'll enjoy it. And, you know, they'll try to win win some prizes and some money, but have the food. But what they don't understand is each booth they stop at, you, you're having a show performed for you. That's correct. You know. That's correct. And um, talk a little bit about that. I mean, it's more than just... A job that you know a workman sitting up there doing his regular work it's more of a of a 
theatrical performance. Correct. And yeah. uh, you're, we'll see some of that later. Uh, it, yes, uh, showmanship comes in, you know, especially in my area of it, mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, we would use what we would call showboating. Mm -hmm. um, these would be acts that we would do with the game that we were working and 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 it would draw the people in because he's not going to do that. He can't do that. And they'd stumble in to see if I did it. And of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, you do things to, to entice them, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's showboating. Yeah. Did you ever have anybody get real uh, uppity with you? Absolutely. The, you know, the... That may have had too much to drink, or just oh, did, yes. didn't, didn't like the uh, oh, yes. didn't like the results they were getting. Old drunk from... cowboys at Cheyenne was fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah. were always fun. They can walk around there with a the beer, so yeah, yeah, it gets real interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so what are one of the 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 main highlights that that you after having retired from the industry, you look back on fondly. What are, what are some of the, the things that you really just adore, retrospectively? Pitching a tip of people and working the spot. Yeah. Working to cover the spot. Yeah, it's just like, it's just like you hear, you know, theater actors or even film actors, you know, once, you, once that gets in your blood, you know, and you're used to that the the interaction with an audience. Yeah, I had Espe to especially theater actors. Right, I know. had to replace a lot of that showmanship uh, after I left the business with, uh, you know, KJ time and and uh, doing street performance busking. Yeah, you know, to get that showmanship time because it's in you and you got to get it out. Well, I mean, you still have that, I'm sure. It doesn't matter how long you live. You're That's gonna right. if you've done that for three or four decades, you're, it's gonna be in you. Absolutely. And and I'm sure uh, you're always in a situation, whether it be a mundane daily situation, you're always wanting to spin it a little bit. Right. Probably. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. that's just the nature of it. That's it. Yeah. Still so, use talents of. I, I I still use talents of the joint in everyday life to this day. If that's only in conversation sometimes with mm -hmm. somebody, because you can, you know, uh, one of the, one of our common cracks that we say is, mm -hmm. uh, it, you, you realize what I did for a living. I sold conversation and very little else. Yeah. <laughs> so why, why do you think, um, you know, when, these days because you know a lot of the the younger people i'd say Easter. i'd say under <laughs> under 30 yeah uh these days and we're in 2024 uh why do some of them when you hear the word uh carny why do you think some of that has a negative connotation to it uh <clears throat> well the way i was taught is uh there are there are two classes of people out there, mm -hmm. okay? And those two classes are either carnies or they're showmen. The difference is obvious. Um, the carny is that, the, the, what you're thinking of, the stereotype, mm -hmm. okay? That's a carny. I'm, I never have claimed to be a carny. Right. Um, I've always, I was told early on, you are not a carny, you are a showman. Mm -hmm. Now, the, that's, the, that's the difference. Because, because of, of the different talent that's required to put on a show, you obviously have people from all different eclectic type backgrounds come together. Mm -hmm. and, it's a melting pot. Yeah, of, of all different cultures, races, backgrounds. Sure. And... That alone, I think, you know, is what some people, you know, put the stigma on that sure. it's just traveling homeless people going from here to there, which that's not the, that's, <laughs> that's not, not the case. True. You know, it's not <laughs> the case. 
The but, show is our home in some cases. Yeah. The show is our home. Yeah. We got our house trailer there and everything. And and so how was it? Um, because you didn't have a choice. You were in a, in a close-knit, small community with this uh, carnival. And having all those people with all those different eclectic backgrounds and... and, and, and I, did you enjoy the the social atmosphere of it? Oh yeah, the, the, the um, it's a it's it, in the early years mm -hmm. it was more family knit. In other words, the show was a family. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the show was your family. That's how I came into the business. It's not that way today. So what did it turn into? Say the last five years you did it before you retired. Was oh, it, it was already. It was already. That that was long gone. Um, the the fam the the idea of the show being family mm -hmm. that was pretty much gone by the mid nineties. Yeah, from what I gather, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I, I'm you know unaware, but it, it seemed like. You know, the basic principle of, of any business anyway is to earn money. So, yeah, you have to go out and earn money. But that family atmosphere that you were talking about was more like the atmosphere you may have on an old family farm or something. Everybody working together. Everybody mm -hmm. knew their role. They stood in their role. Mm -hmm. And then at, at some point in the early 2000s, it seemed like, the corporate America took over. It did. And then when you got these big conglomerations here's what happened. purchasing something yeah. as a as an investment, then here comes the rules and regulations and stipulations and that takes away that intimacy that you had with yeah. the people you worked for. Correct. And then they started bringing in maybe college trained professors and go or college trained people, sorry. And going, well, he, he studied this. Let him do that. And then you're like, you know, that's, that's the way I have and and, and and you have to you have to remember this. Um, I can name off right now five shows that I used to work on. Mm -hmm. And they got swallowed up by a company called Name. Mm -hmm. uh, that's North American Midway Enterprises. They swallowed five major shows and their routes and they they basically made it intolerant for any of us old schools to come back well i've just noticed myself and and because I, I like once a year you know which in the fall tiptoes time and almost tiptoes on violating our civil rights oh yeah lots of it does no doubt but I, as i was gonna say I, i've noticed just myself i like going to the local county fair uh once a year, and I've noticed how much it's changed from even 10 years ago. Absolutely. You you don't have that local feel. You don't have the interaction with people anymore. They're like, just, just like this, you know, you're, you're just a, you're, you're just insignificant. You're not a human. No. Where, whereas not. in the old days, it seemed like they would interact with you more as, you know, socially, right. even though they were, they were, they were trying to sell you something or trying to get you to play a game and make money, it was still more of a social interaction. And you almost felt like, hey, you know, that that guy acts like crazy Uncle Jake, you know, something like that, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. or he reminds me of Uncle Tom, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's gone. Mm -hmm. the, the last several years uh, I've went to even the local county and fair. It's, and, and it's affecting them. They're 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 now starting to reap the repercussions of uh, not having that family unity. Well, I mean, uh, now I would course, argue, of course, the argue. office the office people are all family, but you're not in that club. No, you're not. In the, <laughs> you're, you're not in the office where they count the money. You know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm j just just as a person who's gone for decades to carnivals and stuff it is it's, it's hardly enjoyable anymore I know. whereas it used to be enjoyable i know they 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 took away an element 
that just, you know, you can't do that to that business and still expect your, your grosses and your, your uh, end of the year line to be the same, because it won't be. You, you lost a vital aspect and it, it bleeds on to the people that go to the fair. It bleeds onto them because they sense it. Mm -hmm. So looking back on your life and everything you've done with the carnival and other things too, no doubt, but look, looking back on that, especially because that was a long career. Um, are you happy you made the decision you did and you happy you had that life? Oh yeah. So you wouldn't change it at all? No, I wouldn't trade it out. I, I gained more world avenue knowledge mm -hmm. and probably have more knowledge of, of the world itself yeah, no than no. the average Joe. I, I would imagine so because of the amount of different people you've so met no, and dealt I with. Yeah. I wouldn't trade. Well, you know, a lot of times you'll meet people who are ready to retire and they've hated their career their whole life and they've never, and they, they've just lived a whole life of not enjoying what oh, they've and, done. And, and, and would, I, would I go back? Not to the shows. But would I put a booth up somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still. At 60, I'll still do it. So, I mean, in summing up, is there anything you'd like to tell the audience that we haven't covered today, would you like to talk about or let them know about you or the industry or? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's still okay to go to the fair. Um, you know, when you go that, uh, everything's, everything's put against you, of course, but it's not put against you to the point that you can't win. Um, I encourage you to play games that have a prize every time, uh, if you're worried about that. Uh, if you see big prizes, yeah, you're probably going to have to, you're probably going to have to do something that's pretty difficult. Know that ahead of time. Um, but there's no games out there today like what I'm going to show you later on. Uh, they're not out there anymore because uh, I just got kind of chased out of the business, along with me. Um, and some of it's justified, some of it's not. So, um, and that's all a matter of opinion. Uh, the game that I worked for over 28 years was called the Circle of Science or Cover the Spot. And uh, we're going to be doing a demonstration of that here in just a little bit. So, with that, Tom, would you like to uh, take a little break and we'll get right back to... Yeah, we'll get set up and uh, we'll come back and have you uh, demonstrate uh, sure. for the people. So, <clears throat> just before we do that, just why, why would you like to do this, to demonstrate this for the people? Um... I I was uh, ranked number one agent in 2009. Uh, I was the highest grossing agent. Um, and uh, I, did a, I did perform show boats that are not there. Nobody else is doing them. <laughs> in fact, Guinness, I was offered to go and demonstrate to Guinness. Um, and that was, uh, for the double drop, that was to cover two boards at the same time, um, in w which I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and the flip cover where I flip each plate and cover it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, those are, those are all showboat things. They're not something that's important to the game itself, but right. it's just something to entice people to come in. Yeah. It's just so, a, yeah. Well, we'll be back shortly. We're going to take a short break and let Donnie demonstrate some of his uh, talents, some of his showmanship, and uh, some of his techniques, maybe. Anyway, stick around. Hey, I'm back here with Donnie, and we got one of his boards set up. And Donnie, what, was, what is this called? 
This is called the Circle of Science. Uh, it was created uh, approximately 3,000 years ago by the Mongolians. Wow, <laughs> that's a day uh, or two, yeah. Uh, and it was, it was actually designed originally as a children's game. Okay. And uh, it was for memory and hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. specifically okay um, and then later on it got uh, taken to China and in China uh, it was an execution test if you could cover a circle with five circles you were considered too overeducated and too worthy you were too educated to die so therefore you could a lot of folks die bro um, uh, but <laughs> right. then uh, later on it went to England through the gypsies mm -hmm. and uh, later got outlawed in England and still is outlawed in England to this day. But you know, just on the surface of it, it's, it's kind of odd that a piece of wood with a red circle on it would be outlawed. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost, it's almost illogical. Yeah. <laughs> so, so... Are you going to demonstrate? Uh, I, I'm, what are you going to do? For I'm us? going. To, I'm going to demonstrate the joint as you would see it uh, when you would come to the fair to see me. Okay. Um, and uh, you know the um, the uh, the board didn't always. It didn't. It wasn't always what you see today. Okay. Uh, originally, the gypsies had put it on cheesecloth stretched over a board. Mm. Okay, and. Uh, the cheesecloth was there for a reason, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and I can divulge this because it's already been it's already been out. Uh, you couldn't put it up if you had it, but uh, the cheesecloth was so that they could reach down and and touch the board and stretch the cheesecloth a little bit and then show red. Ah, ah, mm -hmm. terrible, terrible G. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but no. A man by the name of Herschel Freeman, mm -hmm. uh, he took the board uh, from the gypsies concept and he put it on a hard board with no cheesecloth and created what we know today as the circle of science or covered the spot. Okay. So, to play this game, I'm going to give you five circles. The challenge is to cover that red circle with these five circles. To do that, you must hold them up above the board an inch and drop. Once you drop them, you're not allowed to touch them or move them, so take your time. There's no time limit. Cover up all the red one time, and that is how you will win the prizes. Do and that once. Well, that seems, on the surface of it, quite simple. Right. It's a math problem. Of course, they kicked me out of third grade for not shaving, but I can do that. <laughs> so what would the typical prize be if someone were to do this? Uh, it can successful? vary. Uh, back in the day, it could vary from a stuffed animal uh, all the way up to the end of my career, which would have been a 48-inch TV. Wow. Now that's a prize. That's a prize. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you mind if I try it? I don't mind if you try it, but for the sake of cross prosperity and the, and the fact that I was told to do so uh, by the man that taught me, uh, you must put up a penny. Okay. Well, have you got a penny? My God, man, do I have to loan you a penny? <laughs> I'll loan you a penny to play this game. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's just, it's just good. The, 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 it's the, just the, good for the, no, the, 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 the luck. The producer of the show. Oh, granted, the producer of the show. Granted me. I <laughs> granted you a penny. Um, you give me a penny. Okay. I'm going to give you five circles. And you follow the instructions that I gave you. Okay. Go right ahead. And you said, I, I would like to mention at this time that this has been ruled on by the Supreme Court over nine times. It's 10% memory, 90% hand-eye coordination. Okay. Why would the Supreme Court rule on this? Uh, it was ruled on because uh, there was a lot of controversy over the game 
And so Mr. Herschel Freeman went in and he demonstrated the game to the Supreme Court to get the ruling because it's, like I said, it's 90% memory, 10% hand-eye coordination. Okay. So you hold it over the, uh, one inch above. One inch above the board and drop. Once you drop it, you can't touch it or move it. Can you rest your palm on it? Sure. For steady. Now, back in the day when we first started, you couldn't set your hand down. That was a privilege given to you later in the game. Oh, now, sir, that's called a miss. Mm -hmm. Right there. I saw that. Yeah. You, you got you to gotta move that. that edge up until you see it's yeah, going to hit Yeah, it's already that made a mistake. You, you already guys. made a mistake. But you know what? You made a mistake right off the bat. Where did I tell you to put that first one? Half in the red and half in the white. Ah. It covers four times more red that way. Does it? Yeah. Okay. I told you I got kicked out of the third grade for not shaving, but I know that. Half covers most. That's interesting. Mm hmm Now I have to stop you, Tom. Okay. Um, do you have your shoes on the right feet? I think so. Okay. Because uh, remember, I told you, you go to the left first and then to the right. Okay. Are you right-handed? I left am left handed. Right handed. Uh, yeah, you'd definitely go to the left first and then to the right. Now, if you were left handed, I would tell you to go to the right. Now, I've, I, I think I've already mathematically seen what I did because <laughs> that, that left this completely wide open. Yeah, yeah, you left that. So middle. there's no way I there's could no cover that. There's no way to come back. There's no way to cover that. There's middle. no way to come back. Yeah. Can't recover. Challenging, isn't it? Well, it doesn't appear so on, on the surface, but you're right. This it's is this quite challenging. quite challenging. Uh, right. And very educational. And very <laughs> educational. Now, I get a lot of people. I, I already uh, know I messed up on Police that. officers are included in this group. I get a lot of folks to play. <laughs> Look at that. Simply by your hand was in the way. You can't see through your hand, Superman. Uh, but a lot of the police would play because it's like shooting a gun from an inch high, sir. Mm. And I would get them every time. And they would play. Of course, they couldn't do it, but you give them a prize. You're right. It, it, is, <laughs> it, it, it is, um, for you it, give it, them a prize for, you know. It is considerably <laughs> more challenging than it appears on the surface. Absolutely. That, yeah. So the concept, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this from an angle, uh, of mm -hmm. somebody over there, okay? If somebody's on that side. All right, so starting at the top of the board, half in the red, half in the white. Come over to the left, then back to your right and make a three-leaf clover. Come back down to your left, catch the outside and center point, these two red tips, the middle and the outside. Hit those two. And the last one goes half on and half off, just like the first one did, same shape. Same play. And would you explain this to everyone? Absolutely. So you'd outright explain it and it's still going wrong. I would, I would like give them, that, yeah. that was the lesson. You get the lesson on the second <coughs> game if you mess up on the first one. I don't know what you're going to do when you drop them the first time. So I have to see what you're going to do, what mistakes you'll make, and then I point out the mistakes. Right. And then I tell you to play again. <laughs> <laughs> and play again. And pay again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I'll try it one more time. One more time. Yeah, yeah. Half in the red, half in the white. Very good. That's perfect. You, 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 that's a cover if you get it. Over to your left and then back to your right. Nice. Nice. Right down the middle, too. You got the 50-yard line there. Oh, now that, right there, right that there. you just didn't pull up. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give you that. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> go right down there to your yeah. left and catch two red tips. Boom. All right. And your final plate. Half on, half off. Half covers the most. 
A beautiful shot. Yeah. But That's I, called a cover. But I still messed up on that one. I had that. You, so. Yeah, but you, you did complete it finally. But yeah, I gave you this one. But you, it can be done. It interesting. Can be done. Oh yeah, I can see where it could be. <laughs> well, that, that's quite interesting. I appreciate you uh, uh, demonstrating that for us and showing it for us, showing it to us. Uh, anything else you'd like to show us today? Um, we used to we used to take and give out tickets. Yep. Okay. And. These, this is some of the stuff that we used to do back in the day. You'd get a ticket, mm -hmm. and you take this ticket and you cash it in with that man right up there with the red dot, and he's going to give you a free chance to win. And that was that was something that, that got we him did. coming. Yeah, and we called these a Duke ticket. You duked him in. Ah, <laughs> so yeah. there's always a method behind uh, it all, isn't it? Some of the stuff that I still have and, and keep uh, for nostalgia reasons, I have to say that on camera. These are only nostalgic. They're not operational at this point. But uh, this would be the, the old razzle that we, you know, and that's a, that was a flat store. And uh, you had to get 100 points to win the game. Um, that could be done by many, many ways. You could roll marbles into a briefcase uh, that had numbers in it and they added them up. Or you could use dice, um, colored dice sometimes, uh, and uh, they would, they would uh, add it up and it would end up on one of these numbers on this calendar. And then whatever that said, that's what you got. So like for instance, if you rolled a 48, you would, you would automatically win the game 100 points. If you rolled an eight, you would automatically win the game and get the prize. But that was very difficult. <laughs> yeah. uh, to give you a concept, um, if you're rolling dice, uh, let's say you had eight dice, you would have to roll all sixes mm -hmm. to get a 48, and you would have to roll all ones to get an eight. Right. I got you. You say it. So, made it, made it very difficult. <coughs> so, but um, those games, those games in particular are pretty much phased out. You, you won't see one. Um, you might catch, you might catch a trailer once in a while, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this. I've never You've seen You've never that seen one this? I, I, that's hard to believe. That's hard to believe. Well, not it's, that I can recall. Uh, Right. Um, now we were we were a limited group. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody can cover a circle with five circles. And so when you That's found right. somebody that could, right, uh, you pretty much you, yeah. pretty, you pretty much hired them. <laughs> yeah, you hired them. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. So. Well, Donnie, this has been interesting today, hearing about your life and seeing some of your demonstrations and. Uh, would you something? like to see a flip cover? A flip cover? What is that? It's a showboat. What is that? It means it's just something we used to do to call them in. Okay. All right. I can't believe the word. Showmanship. <laughs> Show there you go. And it's been a pleasure, <laughs> and I, I'm I'm really grateful for the interview. I really am, Mike. No problem. Mostly for yeah, my, I, I, mostly for my son Jesse. Yep, I've known uh, Don here for about uh, five years now. I met him at a bike rally at a friend of ours, <clears throat> and uh, he was doing his stuff that I didn't quite understand at the time we had a chat and he 
blows a killer harmonica too, by the way. <laughs> you didn't even mention that, but that's not part of it. Anyway, uh, I, I always thought that, that, that he needed to, to tell his story, and I was glad to get uh, you in here today to tell your story. And I hope glad to be here. you at home are enjoying this uh, as much as I did uh, talking to him. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Much welcome. Thank you. Until next time, this is Community Spotlight. My name is Tom Hubbard. I'm here with Mr. Don Bailey.